What's up, aliens? It's Big Al. Welcome to another dumb sports vlog. Big, big weekend, divisional weekend. Um, we've got four games to go over. We've got coaching carousel. Coaches are finally getting hired. Um, we're starting to see that picture come together. Coaching vacancy still. And we got Deshaun Watson drama. Let's get right into it. Divisional weekend, first game, Packers 32, Rams 18. First of all, fuck Lil Wayne. Wheezy F, baby, and the F is for fuck Lil Wayne. Freaking, I used to love Lil Wayne, too. Right before the um, the Steelers-Packers Super Bowl, this was, what, already 11 years ago? Damn. Um, <clears throat> Wiz Khalifa came out with Black and Yellow, and it was a freaking banger of a song, and Steeler Nation gets hyped, everything like that. And then Lil Wayne decides to drop, oh, green and yellow, green and yellow. Well, I'm, I'm a cheese head. The Steelers are cheese whiz. All this bullshit. Pissed me off. Packers win that game. Now, this weekend, Lil Wayne comes out with version 2.0, and I didn't want to listen to it because it, it would have taken me back 10 years, and I would have just been freaking furious the whole time. So, F Lil Wayne, you make the Packers play better. All right, let's get to the actual game. Um, Packers 32, Rams 18. I say this all the time, but the Rams one week look like they can win the Super Bowl, and the next week they get beaten by the Jets. Obviously, the Packers aren't the Jets, but I don't know if they're stopping the Packers. I don't know if anyone... Any one of these final four are stopping the Packers. Like, the Packers are insanely good right now. And it's kind of karma that, not karma, but I don't know, how would you say, destiny that they play the Buccaneers again because the Buccaneers absolutely throttled them in Tampa Bay earlier this year. <clears throat> Made Aaron Rodgers look foolish. I mean, it was bad. <clears throat> but, I mean, the Rams, they were good. They have a winning formula, which is an amazing pass rusher and an amazing lockdown corner. So, um, Aaron Rodgers found his way around it. That play where Jalen Ramsey supposedly got beat by Devontae Adams for the touchdown, I don't know. I think that was more of a great, amazing play call by Lafleur than um, <clears throat> Jalen Ramsey just getting toasted. Because it's not like he got burned like down the field or anything like that. I mean, the guy <clears throat> motioned across the field three times and then finally decided to, to take a, a right and ends up scoring. Eh, don't take that away from Jalen Ramsey. Still amazing lockdown corner. They needed the motion to beat him. Lots of confusion. Jalen Ramsey immediately yelled at his teammate. <laughs> but, I mean, that's neither here nor there. I picked this game properly. I picked three of the four games properly. Y'all will be proud of me. I need to start gambling on this stuff. But I, I took Packers plus six or minus six and a half. They won by 14. So um, good job the Packers moving on. Goes through Lambeau next week. I don't know who goes into Lambeau in January and wins. Um, they're already predicting snow. Fingers crossed. Tom Brady left all that cold weather nonsense to go play in Tampa. And he's headed right back to the snow to get to a Super Bowl. I'm excited for that game. Bills 17, Ravens 3. This is just Lamar Jackson disappears in every major game. And he got hurt halfway through. But, I mean, just disappears. Three points for, for Lamar Jackson in, what, a half and a quarter of football? A half and a half a quarter? Two point... I'm not going to do the math on that. 2.5 quarters? Something like that. Um, three points? That's nothing, man. And they were driving down. It was 10 to 3. They were driving down. And this is when we knew the game was over. With how slow the, the game was going, how many punts there were, we knew... A touchdown is super valuable in this game, especially it was 3-3 three to three for a while. I think it was 3-3 three to three going into halftime. The uh, Bills come out and score. The Ravens are driving down to tie the game. They get in the red zone, and Lamar Jackson throws his first career red zone interception, which is insane. He has 49 touchdowns and zero interceptions in the red zone before this. Um, throws his first career interception in the red zone, gets housed, and you just felt like the game was over from there. You felt like there was nothing they could do. It was just donezo. I mean, that was the ball game right there. A pick six. If they would have scored no other points, they would have won that game seven to three. So um, good on the Bills. Love the Bills. Played great defense. Amazing defense. Three points against the Ravens. The 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 Browns gave up what 40, 42, 43 points to the Ravens. Um, well done. Well done by the Bills. AFC Championship game. We're coming. We'll see if Pat Mahomes can get healthy. But I love the Bills this year. So I want the Bills to win the Super Bowl. All right, Chiefs 22, Browns 17. Sorry, Brownies, it was over. Y'all were too focused on Juju and Corvette Corvette, and you couldn't focus on Kelsey Kelsey going down and scoring freaking touchdowns. You couldn't focus on Tyreek Tyreek running fourth and ones. Man, Cinderella season comes to an end for the Brownies. You have a lot to be proud of. I wouldn't even be mad at losing to the defending Super Bowl champions, a team that's probably going to go to the Super Bowl if they beat a Bills team next week. I mean, what can you say? The Chiefs are good. And, and the Browns had opportunities. 
right? And everyone, all of a sudden, when it burns your team, it's the worst thing in the world, right? So let's talk about this this diving for the goal line and fumbling out of the end zone. That's been the rule. I mean, it's, it's always been the rule. Like, for as long as I can remember, that's been the rule. Like, don't fumble near your end zone because if that shit goes out of bounds, then you lose the ball. That's always been the rule. Literally always. Like, uh, everyone, every, all of Twitter. Like, not even just Browns Twitter. All of Twitter. The worst rule in football strikes again. The worst rule in football. The worst rule in football. It's been there for so long. If it was the worst rule, they would have gotten rid of it already. Like the Saints crying about the, the refs and freaking um, that defensive pass interference. They got screwed on that defensive pass interference against the Rams. Come on, man. Let's not blame the rules. Let's not blame the ref. I mean, Cowboys with Dez caught it. I mean, the rules are the rules, man. The rules are the rules. That's always been the rule. I don't see it changing, honestly. The Browns can make us think about it in the owners' meeting or whatever they do whenever they change the rules. But, I mean, come on. And then everyone's like, oh, it was helmet to helmet. It was blatant helmet to helmet. It's like, no one wanted to say that helmet to helmet when Mason Rudolph got picked off against the Browns in week 17. He got bludgeoned in the freaking head and everyone's like, oh, interception by the Browns. Yay. It's like, no, he freaking got decapitated by the Browns yet again. And no one gives a shit. But Pat Sorensen comes in here and freaking leads with his helmet into the guy's shoulder and makes him fumble. It's like, come on, man. Don't be, don't go out lame, you know? Don't go out crying. Don't go out about the refs, especially. Crying about the refs is the worst. Makes me hate, like, Saints fans. Don't go crying, all right? You had a great season. The number six seed making the AFC Championship game is very rare. So, I mean, you had a great season. You had a chance at the end. Chad Henney on third and 14 wheels his way to fourth and inches, which is insane, by the way. Chad Henney got destroyed by USC at Michigan in the Rose Bowl probably 15 years ago. And he's still playing in the NFL. That's insane. The fact that Chad Henney's lasted this long is mind-boggling. And then he ran for 15, uh, 14 yards on third and 14. Well done, man. Well done. And then the freaking stones. The absolute wrecking balls that Andy Reid carries in his pants to go for it on fourth and one and throw the ball with his backup quarterback. Tony Rumlet was baffled. <laughs> no one saw it coming. Everyone sees the safe game. You punt the ball rely on your defense, yada, 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 do all that stuff. Andy Reid whipped his freaking nutsack out, put it in the wheelbarrow like the South Park meme, and freaking went for it with his backup quarterback and converted. And that is why, that is what Mike Tomlin says, if you don't get a yard, you don't deserve to go to the, or you don't deserve to win a game. Andy Reid deserves to win games because he's got the nutsack of freaking Thor's hammer just hanging down in his pants. Good Lord. Man, what a call. In a, in a divisional playoff game at home, backup quarterback. What a flipping call. Well done. Chiefs deserve that. Browns, enjoy what you had. Probably going to get better next year. Keeping all your coaches. Got to get better on defense. I asked my Browns buddies, like, what do, what do you think of this game? Like, what, what really went wrong? And they're like, ah, oh, Stefanski um, punting the ball instead of going for it on fourth and one. Kind of gutless a little bit. Um... This little stuff. I mean, Stefanski didn't call his best game, but, I mean, you had Alex Van Pelt right there who called an outstanding game against the Steelers last week. Should have just thrown him more responsibility. I've seen a couple of Browns fans, like, want Alex Van Pelt to be the OC instead of Stefanski and start calling the plays, but who knows what happens. You lose to a tough Chiefs game, Chiefs team in Kansas City. I mean, it's, it's not a huge deal. Um, good season. Let's move on. Um, Bucks 30, Saints 20. And what was probably Drew Brees' last game, Jameis Winston threw the best pass. <laughs> Jameis Winston dropped a dime. And it's insane. They took that from the Bears playbook when the Bears ran it the week before. The Saints come out and just steal their play. Jameis Winston and Mitch Trubisky dropped dimes. Freaking Jameis Winston completes his. Jameis Winston goes back to the bench, immediately breaks out the surface pro, watches his own play like 400 times probably. What do you, you look at the defense and what the defense was doing? Like it was thirty yards open. It was an amazing play call. Why is Jameis jumping on the surface pro? Literally just to watch his play over and over again. You're gonna see that shit on Sports Center. Gonna see all that again. But that was his one highlight for the year. Well done, Jameis. We were all excited. But this was the game I got wrong. I got all the other games right. I had the Packers covering, the Bills covering, the Browns covering, and um, they all did. And then I got this game wrong. I had the Saints covering. The Saints were the favorite, favored by three. I took that the Saints demolished the freaking 
Buccaneers last time they played 35 to 3 and I was like oh Saints are gonna win again easy uh it was not easy Drew Brees can't throw the ball more than five yards down the field looks terrible Tom Brady starts um that was kind of like the Steelers I guess where the Saints offense put the Saints defense in terrible situations the Saints defense is actually really good but they had the pick that they took back it's three picks I think they had three picks to put them in great field position so best thing to come out of this game was Tom Brady throwing a pass to Drew Brees kid Drew Brees sitting there on the field for hours after the game probably just soaking it all in his last time playing he's been a lot to the city of New Orleans especially after like Hurricane Katrina and everything like that so um great career Drew Brees you got a ring like a long time ago but I mean he's got he's got one all right you, you want more you want to go out on one but I mean you just can't do it man Peyton Manning was throwing ducks his last what season or two probably he was never the same after that neck Drew Brees starting to throw ducks starting to look terrible um I mean you had a great career man Ben's right behind you I I'm not just saying that because I mean you're older than Ben too but I mean I'm not going to be biased for the Steelers anymore right Ben you're right behind him Drew Brees right off into the sunset is it Jameis's team is it Taysom's team we can spend all offseason talking about that those are the four games that's what happened in case you lived under a rock this weekend that's what happened all right let's talk about coaches coaches are finally getting hired I tweeted the other day it was like Thursday probably probably the day Urban Meyer got hired because I think he was the first one I was like don't coaches usually get hired by now it was like four days after Black Monday I was like no it was like a week and a half after Black Monday because usually coaches get like hired that week teams kind of know who their guy is and they kind of go after him hard and they kind of throw a lot of money at him and they go for their guy or whatever but it took like a week and a half to start hiring people and it was Shad Khan who who came at Urban Meyer and put him on his freaking private yacht and all that stuff and he brought Urban Meyer in and Urban Meyer's getting his staff together and it's coming along nicely he got that strength coach from Ohio State that freaking destroyed that Wisconsin fan in the game so at least you have that intensity on their sidelines I was listening to Ian Rappaport on uh, Pat McAfee's podcast earlier he was talking about how a couple of these teams went for guys that aren't play callers and that's urban meyer and the lions landed dan campbell who's an assistant coach for the saints but these couple of teams went after non-play play callers and i started thinking about that and it started like resonating with me it's like what do they really want and then he said it like right after i started thinking it's like they want leaders they want real leaders in there they don't want play callers who are just going to come in and run one side of the ball they want real leaders that are going to be there and coach and you think about like a real leader like you don't you don't want someone that's going to call the plays it's like well you think about john harbaugh special teams coach didn't really call plays um joe judge is working out well in new york so far uh, not really play caller special teams coach it's like did if you find a good leader i mean go get him you can get adam gase as your offensive coordinator and dan quinn as your defensive coordinator if you want to right both those guys have, have great coordinators or whatever i don't know about adam gase or jim caldwell like pick eric bien still not getting hired which we'll talk about later because that's wild but um these guys just want great leaders and dan campbell is a saints assistant coach that is just like all his players talk so highly of him and everyone talks so highly of him and so like why not get a good leader into a program to change a culture especially in detroit who's had a terrible terrible streak of just losing seasons and factory of sadness and they're probably replacing the browns after after the Cavs won the championship they probably replaced cleveland as like the the factory of sadness bankrupt ass city they got Dan Campbell in there trying to turn the lines around. Urban Meyer goes to try and turn the, their, um, the Jags around. Arthur Smith, Titans OC, goes to Atlanta trying to turn the Falcons around. I don't know if I like a Titans OC for a head coach spot. I mean, obviously, I don't know the guy. I don't know much about him. But you think a guy with Derrick Henry is probably just had his success because of Derrick Henry, right? You got Todd Gurley. You got Matt Ryan. You got Julio Jones, Calvin Ridley. There's like a le- or 10 first picks on the ter- first round picks on on the Falcons offense right so they're a real strong offensive team but all the other three teams that just um that just hired coaches all did the the thing that everyone expects you to do right they ha- they have an offensive coach and then it doesn't work out they switch over to a defensive coach right so we start thinking about I mean it's like a president right we do four years Republican. It's like, okay, well, that guy was freaking terrible. Go four years, eight years Democrat. And they're like, okay, that guy was terrible. And then we go back to Republicans. Then we go back to Democrats. And we keep doing this endless cycle. I mean, Arthur Smith coming in to be an offensive juggernaut for the Falcons after Dan Quinn came in to be the defensive guy for the Falcons. 
take him, takes him to the Super Bowl. I mean, let's see what Arthur Smith can do. That offense is good on paper. You look at that offense on paper. Matt Ryan was an MVP quarterback four years ago. Whatever their Super Bowl year was when they blew that lead. Um, Julio Jones, arguably one of the best receivers. Todd Gurley, just a couple of years ago, was the best running back in the game. Um, solid offensive line. First round picks on the offensive line. Calvin Ridley, stud receiver. I mean, he's got the tools. Let's, let's see if he can put it together and actually pass the ball instead of just hand the ball off to Derrick Henry. Right? Well, probably one of my favorite hires, Robert Salah, the Jets. Um, that's awesome, man. They obviously went Adam Gase. Didn't work out. Offensive genius, supposedly. Everyone just says it's because he had Peyton Manning and Peyton Manning ran the team. But failed in Miami, failed in New York. Now I got Robert Salah is going to come in there and run the defense. Um, he should get C.J. Mosley back next year. I think he opted out this year. Um, Quinn and Williams. Let's see what they do with the number two overall pick. Do they go quarterback? Do they go offensive lineman? Who knows what they're thinking. Um, let's see if he can turn that defense around. I just like him as a leader and a, and a coach. He's probably one of the coaches where you think he's highly respected by players and he's a great play caller in this, um, this I mean, cycle of coaching, I guess. And you got Brandon Staley, someone I didn't really hear named until he got hired. Rams defensive coordinator Brandon Staley goes to the LA Chargers. I don't really know a lot about this guy. I can't even really talk about him. I don't know a lot about him. I don't know what he's about. Jalen Ramsey said he was a defensive genius. So, I mean, that's kind of cool. The Chargers have a good defense. Um, Melvin Ingram, Joey Bosa. You got um, Derwin James. If, he, if Derwin James can stay healthy, man, he's every time he plays a few games, he's like the best receiver or best safety in the league. And then he gets hurt. And he's had so many injuries in like his three-year career. I hope he can, I hope he can stick it out because um, he's good. I mean, you come in here with a good defense. Bringing an offensive coordinator, I mean, they freaking, their offense was good. Herbert's the, the franchise quarterback. Herbert's legit. Their offense was great. They got um, Keenan Allen. Mike Williams was playing better. You don't need to worry about offense. Worry about putting this defense together. And you get a stud defense going. I mean, that's what defense wins championships, right? Who else do we have left? The Texans and the Eagles have yet to hire coaches. Now, I've seen the Eagles brought in Josh McDaniels from the Patriots, who... Is Josh McDaniels ready to give up on the Patriots after... He was supposed to be the guy in waiting. He had that Colts job locked up a couple of years ago and then um, ended up turning it down, going back to the Patriots. I don't know, trying to take over after Belichick retired, probably. It's been a couple of years. Belichick's not retiring. You just lost nine games? Were they 7-9? I forgot the Patriots record. Easily forgettable team this year. But are the Eagles going to go for Josh McDaniels? Are they going to turn... Is he going to turn Carson Wentz around? Is he going to be the guy? I don't know who else is the Eagles have interviewed. The Texans, I saw that they completed interviews for Eric Bieniemy, um, a bunch of guys. I don't know. I think Deshaun Watson really wants Eric Bieniemy because Deshaun Watson is like on the verge of asking for a trade. He wasn't involved in the in the Casario hiring, which is the GM there now. He was from the Patriots organization. Um, he wasn't involved in that, and then he got pissed off, and he said he went from two to ten on on Twitter, which he said he was at a, an anger level of a two when they traded DeAndre Hopkins for freaking peanuts. And now he's on a level 10 when they freaking brought in that GM without talking to him. And who, God knows what happens if they bring in a coach without consulting Deshaun Watson, you know? I guess he knows best for the team. Or where's J.J. Watt on all this? <laughs> J.J. Watt's like three-time defensive MVP, like senior leader on the team, um, on the back half of his career, doesn't want to rebuild, just went 5-11, and 11, is pissed off and ready to go. I mean, he should be making calls like that too, right? Him and Deshaun Watson, both faces of the franchise, um, both probably the two best players in franchise history, young franchise, but probably the two best in franchise history. I mean, I don't see Deshaun wanting anyone but Eric Bieniemy, but I think everyone's passing on him because, like what I just said earlier, everyone wants a leader, right? Who knows how much Eric Bieniemy is really doing in in Kansas City? You know, you see Andy Reid calling plays all the time, always talking to the headset, always looking at his play play chart, calling up these freaking evil genius plays. How much is Eric Bieniemy really doing? Maybe teams are bringing him in for this interview. And, I mean, he was expected to get a job last year. He's expected to get a job this year. He's not getting these jobs. Like, what is it, you know? Aaron Rodgers falls to the 22nd pick. Like, what are teams seeing? It's really interesting. I want to know what teams are seeing with Eric Bieniemy. And freaking the Chiefs are reaping all these benefits. Because whatever he's doing in the Eagles organization, or in the um, Chiefs organization, whether it's him or Andy Reid, whoever's running the freaking show over there, they're killing it. They're in the AFC Championship game for the third year in a row. They're hosting it. Never happened in the AFC before. They're doing amazing. 
I mean, just what is wrong with Eric Bieniemy? You know, seems like a quiet guy. Maybe he's not the leader that everyone's looking for. Maybe Urban Meyer was the leader everyone was looking for, which I don't think that's going to work out at all. But that's for another time. All right, because I think there's a lot that Urban Meyer is going to do wrong in the NFL. All right, that was my rant for the the beginning of the week. Talk games, talk coaching hires. I don't really give a shit about GMs. We bashed Little Wayne a little bit. Yeah, good show. Good show, good vlog. I don't know what it is. Whatever you guys want to call it, you can call it that. Call it your dipshit friend freaking just throwing nonsense out there to his 20 YouTube subscribers and his 8 views per video. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. <clears throat> Appreciate you guys. Oh, shitty stat of the day. Nine Iowa players are still in contention for the Super Bowl. And the next was seven. Like, LSU and Miami, I think, had seven. So, bad news all around. Iowa has the most t most players in the NFL that are still alive. <laughs>